Darren Simpson says he makes the best curry. Ach man, Simpson is net ster verder as hy kan hy nie kos maak. Rise and shine. It is a beautiful day to make a Cape Malay curry. Today I'm going to prove to you that I am the ultimate curry master. I'm a Durban boy, so it's kind of in my blood. With Roger today, this is my secret spice. Let me show you how it's done. Darren Simpson, you and your Durban curry, you look on my hand slap because that title is going to be mine. Raja curry master. I can really smell the win. This is KFM Mornings with Darren, Sherlin and Sibs. Cool, let's do a quick rundown of the ingredients we'll be using today. Uh, so a green pepper, salt, pepper, butter. You don't want to be using margarine. Then you've got your onions, your garlic and your ginger. Uh, we've got some nice lamb from the local butchery here in Stellenbosch. And then of course our Raja spices. So I like mixing a little bit of the medium and the hot just to get the right amount of spice. And this is just a bowl of goodness. <laughs> Smells delightful. You've got everything in there from caramong, jira, bay leaves, cinnamon sticks. But my secret weapon is family. And today it's going to be a lamb curry. And this is a kind of like a Durban Indian curry, but it's also got my own blend. I kind of call it a hybrid between a Rogan Josh and a Durban curry. So obviously the secret spice is Raja. I've got the masala here. I also make a little bit of a blend with something else. And to give it a bit of a kick, I put a bit of chili and some paprika and a little bit of peri peri spice. So it's going to be a nice warm curry, not too hot, something for everyone. I like a bit of a fruity flavor, a little bit of citrusy. So I add some tomato. I've got not tomatoes, but I put tomato puree and a bit of tomato paste. Um, also, what you don't know goes into curry, good curries that is, is a bit of yogurt, Greek yogurt, I've got that here. Um, apart from all your spices, the other little things, the paprikas, the ground cumins, the turmerics, the corianders as well. This is the secret as well, which you only throw in right at the end. You don't put it in the beginning. how you can get the most taste without breaking bank and using too many ingredients. It can be done in our family. I think this recipe has been in the family for more than 100 years. This comes out from Oma's side of the Heidel in Williams world. Okay, so the first thing we do is chopping the onions. Now, I have cooked with Gordon Ramsay before. Legit, you can go and fact check it, I have. And he taught me how to chop an onion. I do it like uh, the mom's way, the way that your mom or your dad would probably do it. No tears in this kitchen. Again, you don't want to chop the onions too fine. I love garlic for that flavor. I mean, it's not even on the fire yet and already that amazing smell coming through. The only way you cook is on gas, baby. For me, every meal has to have onions, even my cornflakes. So while the onions are busy going, you look for your pieces. The smaller pieces with the bone, I just leave it like that and I chuck that in. But the bigger ones, you just want to trim them a little bit. Get them into nice sort of bite-sized pieces. Okay, now we get to the fun part where we actually get to start cooking. Uh, but before we do, Papsi Wapsi, tell me about this fire that you have made. Van die kole is baie belangrik. Ja, en die kole moet kan hou vir die pot, ne. En dit is nou wat jy noem, dis karie ou karie. So hy is een inneemse boom en sy kole, woooo, sy kole hou moet dan. So local is lekker even when it comes to your wood people. So there you have it. We've got our butter and the onions. That does smell amazing. You almost can't believe that there's just onion and butter in there. Okay, so here is the lamb neck. Get this in and just get it to brown. You don't want to cook it too much. You just want to kind of seal it. So now it's important that we add in all the spices now before we have the big base sauce, all the liquids in here, because we want the spices to roast. They need to actually fry, they mustn't boil. So there, in goes the masala. Uh, there goes the cumin. 
coriander, some salt, we'll check if we need more of that later, the paprika, the pepper, turmeric, there's the chili powder, and there's the ginger powder. So we get that all in, get those spices almost right to the bottom. Look at that, just put that camera in there, have a look at that, that's what you're looking for. So we're just waiting for our onions to brown and while we wait we're going to make our curry sauce. Yes. So we're going to start with two cups of water. Hot water. Boiling hot water. water yeah. Your bowl of heaven. I like mixing my Raja curry powder so I've got the medium and the hot. Shall we do two spoons of medium? medium. And then, but a nice heaped one because I like a little bit of spice. And then maybe just some salt and pepper. Yeah, that's so that the, the Raja Mutsuma Bana mm, and Tri. In Nigeria! Yeah. Okay, let's chop some garlic. Garlic and onions, the two wonder ingredients that need to be in every single meal, I believe. If you're cooking without them, your food tastes shit. In goes the garlic. And the garlic can burn very quickly, especially when you're at this frying process. So this has got to be a little short pop. Here's my extra garlic, and I don't even measure. This has got the ginger in as well. Two tablespoons. One tablespoon of butter and some fresh chili. This is not a potent chili. This is quite a mild chili. Gets in there, nice, real fresh flavor as opposed to the chili powder spice. Okay, now I'm ready for the tomato. Now we're gonna add the tomato puree. This is not tomato paste. If you put this much tomato paste, you're gonna totally destroy your curry. Soak this in a little bit. You don't need all of it. It's gonna give a lovely flavor. Notice I haven't had any liquids yet. We're not boiling anything yet. That's the last part of the process. Everything is fried. Tomato, raw, not so great. Fried, amazing. So while you wait for your onions to brown, you can make this curry mix. And it really smells so amazing. Look at all of those flavors. Okay, so now we've fried everything. Comes off the hot heat, it goes on to simmer. It's just gonna just like, just gently be there. Just gonna just be like a hot summer's day underneath this meat. Now I've added uh, some chicken stock. One cup of chicken stock. Give it one little mix up. There you pretty much got your curry. It's 80% done. Put the lid on and you don't look at it for two hours at least. Just leave it. Just leave it. And then after two hours, we put the special coriander, fresh coriander on, and we put the cream in, and it's ready to be served. But Siri put Papa. Oh, I say Vakri, please. <laughs> so we've added our meat to our onion mix, and now it's my favorite part. So now we have all of our beautiful, delicious ingredients in our pot. Maar die aardappels moet je niet vergeten, nee. Oh, of course. We'll add the potatoes once the meat is thoroughly cooked through. But now, it's a waiting game. Let the pot sit there. It'll tell you when it's ready, hey? Yes. <sighs> Thank you, Roger. Sherlin and Papsi Wapsi, you have got no chance. Okay, uh, no more. No more talk. No more talk. No more talk. We've been talking curry all week. Okay, so Prim has gone through the two curries to the yep. sound of the Punjabi MC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we want to hear your thoughts in a sec. All right, break it down for us. Prim ready. Okay, so I don't know whose curry is whose. So no. It's kind of a blind testing. Mm. So I've called it left and right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Left and right. Yeah. Oh, Only yes. one plate will be lifted. Pressure. Which one will it be, left or right, Darren oh, or Sherlin? It's, it's left, guys. It's oh. I am the Curry King. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> <laughs> 
Bye, bye, bye. This is KFM Mornings with Darren, Sherlin, and Sibs.